Mr. Auditor, ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank you for the invite. Um, there's three atheists here tonight proposing uh, this motion. I have here the Hadith by Bukhari, Book 88, Hadith number 5, which says we are to be executed, but we're not to be burnt. We should be executed in some other form. So you can look up Book 88, uh, Hadith 5, uh, if you want. So hopefully that won't happen tonight, we'll keep it civilised. Now, I've got a lot to get through, I've got a complex argument to make, so just bear with me, I might uh, leave off in the questions. I just want to explain why I'm interested in Islam at all, uh, because I, I had very little I interest, like a lot of my generation, in Islam before 9-11. Uh, I was from a Christian background, uh, I read the counter-arguments to Christianity, uh, I became an atheist. Uh, I think all gods are fictional, including all of your gods, every god that everyone believes in in this room, I believe, are fictional. So, but before 9-11, Christianity was the target. Christianity was the religion to criticize. The Bible was the book that we uh, picked holes in. Uh, Islam, I, I knew Islam was no more rational than Christianity. Uh, I knew it oppressed people, uh, such as uh, uh, in Iran or Afghanistan, but it was all very far away. It was about as interesting as uh, Hinduism or Buddhism. Uh, that is uh, not, not interesting at all. Um, now, 9-11 changed everything. Live and let live, but I don't have to be interested in your hobbies. 9-11 um, uh, changed everything. Like millions of Westerners, my real introduction to Islam was through a spectacular act of Islamic violence. Now, millions of people got interested in Islam since 9-11. Many of them drew different conclusions. I began to read, and there was a lot more Islamic terror attacks, as we know, in the last 15 years. And somehow in the last 15 years, Islam became part of our lives. It's always in the news, we're always talking about it, and nobody predicted this. Uh, I grew up during the Cold War, it was all communism then. We talked about the Soviet Union and communism. Nobody would believe that in 30 years later, uh, we would all be here talking about Islam. Any more than if I told you in 30 years' time, we'll all be having debates uh, about Hinduism. Uh, you'd just be incredulous. And people in the Cold War would have been incredulous that we were talking uh, about Islam 30 years later. So why are we talking about Islam? I'm afraid the answer is very simple. It's Islamic violence. Without Islamic violence, uh, we would not be here. This debate would not happen. Westerners would pay very little attention to Islam at all. It would just be ignored as one of the curious religions, followed by strange foreigners, some immigrants of interest to anthropologists, but how many people get really fascinated by, by Hinduism and Buddhism? So the motion, unfortunately, I think is, is obviously true. Islamic violence is why we are here. Uh, now, I could try and summarize the incredible amount of Islamic violence in the last 1400 years, but in fact, if you Google killings for Islam, you will find my page. And I do have a nice, easy to read summary. Yes, I do have a page called Killings for Christianity. That's very popular uh, as well. I'll just give you three statistics uh, from the page. A chap called Bill Warner estimates that Islam has killed 270 million people in its history, that it's, as an idea, it is the biggest killer in the history of the world. It beats communism, Christianity, and all the rest. He might be wrong, but it's possible. On that point Another side note, I just have a lot to get through, so I won't. Uh, maybe at the end, I'd love to. Uh, there's a site called The Religion of Peace, which tracks Islamic terror attacks around the world. It actually lists them all. There have been 27,000 of them, more than that, since 9-11. Not since the 7th century. There have been 27,000 since 9-11. Uh, um, I have a list myself of Islamic uh, terror attacks on the West, because you couldn't possibly do the, the job of all of them. And unfortunately, these are escalating. Under the eight years of Bush, there were 25 Islamic terror attacks on, on the West. Under the seven years of Obama, there have been 92. So unfortunately, Islamic violence is escalating. Let me deal with some arguments. Are all Muslims, including the good people here tonight, implication in that? Of course not. Only a fool would say that. There are Muslims with philosophical objections to violence for their religion. There are branches that have well-defined theological. The Ahmadis come to mind. The Ahmadis have never carried out a terrorist attack in all of history because they have a theological objection to it. There are, mil there are then millions of Muslims, like I hope most of you, who just want to get on with life and have a job and a house and a car and don't want to kill for your ideas and good for you and you've the right to practice whatever religion you want. Now, but is it a tiny minority, as the speaker uh, said a minute ago? Unfortunately, the opinion surveys say no. They say it's actually quite enormous. Uh, so I'll give you an example. 2002, the majority of Egyptians support 9-11. 2004, the majority in Jordan and Morocco support suicide bombing of Jews. 2010, the majority of Jordanians support Hezbollah and Hamas. The majority of Nigerian Muslims support... These are majorities. There's a little... Gra no, no, I said uh, wait till the end or later. I, I have too much to get through, sorry. Um, we might have a minute at the end. I'd love to debate. Now, there's a graphic I have from Sayyid Rahman, and he's put numbers on it. 1.62 mi uh, million 
Muslims in the world. And these surveys actually ask Muslims difficult questions such as, do you believe in death for leaving uh, Islam? Like the Hadith says. The Hadith says uh, that if you leave Islam, uh, you should be killed. I'm sure you have some explanation uh, for that coming up later. But the point is that not everyone agrees with that explanation. Of the 1.62 billion Muslims, I hope I didn't say million, of the 1.62 billion Muslims in the world, uh, 584 million, according to the numbers, the opinion surveys, 584 million Muslims in the world believe you should be killed for leaving Islam. So for merely becoming an atheist like I did from Christianity, couple of, uh, you know, upset my family, they got over it, now we're, we're friends. Uh, the, uh, that's, that's what Christians do. A lot, some Muslim families do that, and good for them, no, we've been through this. So, <laughs> So here's my thing. Anybody who says it's 1.62 billion Muslims are extremists is wrong, and they are slandering a whole load of very good people. But anybody who says it's an absolute tiny minority of 1% is unfortunately wrong. The, the bad news is 584 million. Who is Saif uh, Rahman who did this? He's an ex-Muslim. And these are the kind of people I hang out with, are, are uh, atheist ex-Muslims. They're very interesting. And they, they try and they keep us atheists non-racist. So, one to end, well, how can Saif, maybe Saif is a racist against his own people, because he's an atheist now. So, I want to end on optimism. Uh, you may not regard it as optimism, but wait till you hear what I say. Will Islamic violence ever stop? I say it's getting worse. I believe it may, because something absolutely enormous is happen happening in Islam that never happened before in the entire 1,400 year history of Islam. It is having to face criticism that it cannot control. This has never happened before except in little pockets here and there where some caliph tolerated a little bit of criticism. But uh, for 1,400 years, critics were killed, apostates were exiled and executed, books were burned or couldn't be published. There's no, today there is no atheist society of Mecca holding little debates like we're holding here. There's nobody getting up and uh, uh, giving out about the Hadith and saying they don't believe in, in Muhammad or Allah or any, any of us. There's all the, uh, in the past, uh, this never happened. Um, uh, for, for 1,400 years. Westerners criticized uh, Islam, some curious Westerners who were intellectuals. David Hume, for example, the great philosopher, wrote about the Quran in 1760. Uh, he didn't think much of it. Uh, you, you probably won't be surprised to hear, but his main target was Christianity. And he came up with devastating arguments against Christianity, and indeed all religion, uh, which is the problem of miracles, he, 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 uh, or the argument about miracles. Go read Hume's argument. His ideas had a massive influence in the Christian world, made deism intellectually respectable, and then eventually uh, 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 atheism. Uh, they had almost no influence in the Islamic world. His books weren't translated into, into Arabic. None of the books of the skeptics of the 18th century were. But the internet changes everything. These ideas are now spreading to the Islamic world. You try bringing up your kids today uh, anywhere in the world and stop them finding the skeptical sites uh, about uh, Islam. There are learned books online. There are personal accounts by Saif uh, Rahman and ex-Muslims. Uh, uh, there are endless YouTube videos from academic to comedy. Uh, there's a great site called the Skeptics Annotated Quran, which I'd recommend for anybody who wants to perhaps challenge their faith. Now, are you going to tell me that at any time in the last 200 years, in any Islamic country, you could walk into a bookshop and buy the Skeptics Annotated Quran or any book like that? Of course you couldn't. But now it's online, it can't be stopped. Okay, this is all new, brand new, uh, really the, only the last 20 years, and it's going to have a huge impact uh, on Islam. The dam is going to break, uh, apostates are going to come out, atheists, ex-Muslims, they're already coming out all over the, all over the internet. Uh, and the rest of the Muslim world will become a bit less confident about their faith. And the theology of the rest of the world and those 500 million who believe in death for atheism will shift, I believe, eventually uh, towards a, a less confident view and towards a, a more non-violent view. So it may happen, this is the long term, uh, it may take a century, but I believe there is hope. In the short term, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid I, I have no hope to bring you. I think uh, Islamic violence is going to escalate in, in the short term. Sorry about that, but thank you for listening. Thank you.